it's winning Monday. It's been it's been almost a dog on three to four months before we can say that the last Monday win was against the Carolina Panthers on a late second field goal. So this is going to be something we're going to relish in. Come on in. We got John Costco, Pro Football Focus, as always, with us after a win on a Monday. It feels good. We'll talk about the offense. Who did it? what? Uh, Mari Cooper seemed to step up. You know, never know really until we get into the grades, but uh, offensive grades up front, offensive grades on the outside uh, in, in the running game. Also, we'll get to defense. Hey, you guys happy? Miles Garrett finally showed up. When it counted, he got a big time sack. We'll talk about that. We'll see who had the highest grade on defense. We'll talk about how they were able to slow down Tom Brady a little bit. And then and then we get to open our presents. We get to get, get to the treats and the toys in the third segment. We'll take some of your calls, take some of your uh, chats, and we'll talk about Deshaun Watson coming back into the fold, what to expect, what to look for, what does the offense look like, and will the Cleveland Browns be able to get a win, all, most importantly, to extend this to a two-game winning streak against the Houston Texans. We'll do that all coming up next on the Locked on Browns podcast. You are Locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, Every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things dog pound LG. TV on the LLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your, your team every day. And it's long, my good friend Garrett Bush actually forgot the term, Victory Monday. It's Victory yeah. Monday. Look, you got to <laughs> cut Garrett some slack. We ain't done this since September 12th. September 12th. Obviously, the Browns, other two wins this season, Thursday Night Football, Halloween against the Bengals. But a big one yesterday. Um, I, I know a lot of people obviously have their eyes towards the Browns' next six games, and certainly within reason. But yesterday was a big one. I mean, you know, Jacoby Brissett, for everything he's done for this franchise, and it was good to get Jacoby out. You know, one of the things we talked about with Jacoby, we never put him in the position like he was in yet. Well, guess what? For yesterday, it worked out. Through one, you know, I love the ball when you're throwing it to the crossbar. You know you've got an athlete that can things other guys can't. David Njoku, magical one-handed catch. Browns defense, we've talked about this a lot. They were a 22-and-a-half-minute team a lot of weeks. Last, yesterday, not only 60 minutes, played near 78, I mean, 68 minutes yesterday in a big victory in overtime over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Garrett Bush, at G Bush 91. We are joined today, as you guys know, when we go for the post-game show, John Costco leads out of the offensive side, defense side ball. Of course, we're going to talk about – and look, there's, I phrased it like this. I'm going to continue to phrase it. This should be the greatest error of the Cleveland Browns football, period. It's the way it should be. Let's see if it happens. Today's episode of Lockdown Browns is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You can pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than the Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. With the promo code locked on, that's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. As we said, it was a fun one yesterday. Uh, your Browns get out early, which they seem to do. Uh, Tampa Bay, I don't know if anybody really wants to talk about it. You know, Tampa Bay, maybe else, but yeah, this is a team where, you know, maybe Tom maybe should have stayed at home. I'm not talking about his personal life, I'm talking about his play on the field. Uh, Tampa Bay certainly struggling there on that side of the ball. John, but you, you got Nick Chubb going back yesterday. You got Amari Cooper going yesterday. Um, you know, David Njoku with a big catch, you know, which, you know, if you're fantasy-wise, probably up what you got from David Njoku yesterday. Um, you were able to find, you know, a way to get Anthony Schwartz involved. And, you know, for the time he's been here, look at McCole Hardman. I'm not saying he's going to be McCole Hardman. That's the type of guy you want to use. You want to use that speed. You want to use that diversity against another team's defense. They found a way to do that. John, Jacoby's going to close here, and I guess it's a, a top 10 overall grade he'll finish with after 11 games as the team starter. And when you talk about with going with a backup quarterback for that lengthy period of a time, I mean, that is more than you can ask for and then some. 
Yeah, I mean, he's he's done ex- obviously really well for himself in these uh, 11 games. And I really couldn't ask much more from a guy of his caliber. Um, you know, he's a guy that coming into the season last year, he had, a, you know, his his high – had his highest grade uh, season ever, which was a 76. And he just built upon that. And this year was an 82 overall um, utilized like a, you know, his rushing ability that he has. And, um, you know, I think uh, from a, from a schematic standpoint, it, this, this scheme really fits what he does well. Um, and so he made the most of it. So with an, you know, he's like I said, an 82.5 overall, this, this season, this past game was a 73.7, which is, it was good enough to win it for them. Um, and I think, you know, you look at what he's done, you know, for over the, the course of the 11 games, um, probably good enough play to get them to be in consideration to win a lot of games. Um, but, you know, you talk about the, the stretch runs where he, they needed to clutch up. Uh, they finally clutched up yesterday. They hadn't been able to do that uh, from pretty much, you know, for the last, you know, nine games or whatever it was. So I think for for him, it was a great way to send off and um you know is he a starting quarterback in the nfl you know if you're a starting quarterback in the nfl maybe you win a couple more of those games but i think he he, he's definitely given himself a good shot to earn one of these starting quarterback positions that will which will open up in the offseason so uh kudos to him for for you know for a great year for him um in a generally down year that it's been for quarterbacks overall well, John, I was just about to ask you that question. I, I do think as well that he, he made himself some money. I think, um, you know, the Browns would like to bring him back, but I think when you look at the, the starting quarterbacks in the league, you can't tell me that Jacoby Brissett doesn't look pretty good to a Jets team. A Jacoby Brissett wouldn't look good uh, even in some places, you know, even in, in Detroit, other places like that. I think he's played well enough to get himself in a mix, even if he's not the flat-out starter for a guy that they can bring in to compete with uh, as as well going into the season uh, for another uh, organization. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Buccaneers game. Um, it was a sloppy game, sloppy track, um, but I, I think the Cleveland Browns did themselves um, some good – they did some good things out there that, that really uh, got them to win. Uh, Nick Chubb got over 20 carries. Those 20 carries, we know what the record is. When your <laughs> man Nick Chubb get over 20 carries, you already know they're undefeated. That streak still happens. Uh, Amari Cooper dropped a big fourth down, which I thought was going to really come back on him. He came back and redeemed himself, came back again, caught the next pass thrown to him, as well had the long run to set up the Nick Chubb run. When you look at the offense, who really uh, stood out to you as far as the top performers according to PFF? Yeah, um, you know, it's an interesting one from an offensive perspective because I don't think there were any there, – there were a lot of mistakes that happened. Like you talked about – you talk about the uh, the Mark Cooper drop. That was a big drop in the game. David and Joker had a drop earlier in the game. He was actually kind of poor in pass protection. He was asked to do that. But, like, obviously in, in Joku in the fourth quarter, um, he was a, he was actually phenomenal, um, the highest graded, you know, player in the fourth quarter in overtime for, for the Cleveland Browns with a, uh, a 90 – uh, 90.0 grade there. So I think um, overall, you know, you t- you, no, I don't think anybody like played spectacularly. Um, that kind of shows out in the grades. Highest graded player actually was Jacoby Brissett at a 73.7 in this game. Um, because I think what what you saw is a uh, an inconsistent performance from the team. You, they talked about it on the broadcast for 40 plus minutes of the game. You know, the Browns didn't score. And, you know, it, it really came down to, you know, scoring a touchdown with, with 30 seconds left in the, in the regulation and then obviously punching in in overtime. Um, and so you had some big plays that, you know, obviously Amari Cooper had had in, in, in overtime and uh, David Njoku's catch and, and Nick Chubb had some timely runs. But I think for a large part of the game, it was it was pretty lackluster for them. And that kind of shows out in the grades. There's no question about that. Um, and that's, I think, what makes yesterday's win as impressive as it was. Um, it, it, and it wasn't a story we haven't seen before. You know, Browns come out, they get competitive, you know, then when the other team's offense seems to, you know, change the score in their ha- favor, we get a little nervous about where the defense is as far as mind, as far as a collective unit. Um, not necessarily the case yesterday. Um, you know, you, you got some uh, truly, you know, some inspiring performances from some guys we really haven't gotten to see. We're going to get to that, obviously, here as we flip it up here and go to the defensive side of the ball. Um, and if anybody watched the Sunday night game, 
last night. This was one of the takeaways I have. And this is they weren't obviously talking about Jacoby Brissett, but it was in regards to Jacoby Brissett is what do you do when you have that quarterback who isn't also the athlete? I mean, because we are trending to this way now in the NFL. I mean, all the best quarterbacks, the Mahomes of the world, obviously the Josh Allen mobility is a huge, huge part of their game. And they were talking about that. And you know, that's kind of the point I'm getting to with Jacoby Brissett. Um, you know, for Jacoby, it's just something he doesn't have. So, you know, a lot of times it takes, you know, a, a lot of things to go perfectly right for him to succeed, you know, due to the fact that he can't just bail out and say, well, I see 12 yards over there to the right that nobody's covering. I'm going to go pick up the first down, move the sticks. And, you know, you see that with a lot of top quarterbacks here in the league today. But, I mean, about everything you could have asked for, four and seven, obviously, even if it was just five and six, you, you take back the jet game, even if it was five and six. It's a hell of a job, and you, you know you, you probably put you know Deshaun Watson. That will now be on him, uh, you know, to make this interesting. Either way or not, you know, people are going to be excited for this next six weeks. You, you want to see what you have in Deshaun Watson. The key of this also is, you know, Deshaun Watson needs to play well. This team needs to show well. So you got people who are potential free agents in twenty twenty three. Gone. All right. Yeah, I, I like the way that's looking. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Give me a shout. You know, I'm interested. We're going to get to the defensive side of the ball here. John Costco joining Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush. Your latest. Locked on Brown. This episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football cast that football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. Fine, Block Forever. Now wherever you get your pod, Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL pro Ryan Khalil and Audible. Khalil takes the conversation about football to the next level. He sits down with star players, coaches, and former pros across the league to get real about what happens on the field and behind the scene, and most certainly inside the locker rooms during team meetings, and certainly back at the hotel as well. You'll hear Kishman Caffrey talk about his love-hate relationship with fantasy football. Juju Smith-Schuster give his most honest questions on other players and positions within the league catch the full block forever series available anywhere you get your podcast available everywhere now audible get in the game welcome back to the locked on browns podcast g bush jeff lloyd john costco browns victory monday we'll take that victory browns now move to four to seven or four and seven and you know what the crazy part about this game was they did it against tom brady who had never been come from behind on with a seven or i believe it's a seven um seven point seven nothing with two minutes to go yep it, crazy and to be able to do that to go four and seven the thing that it does is it gives us a little bit of hope, gives us a little bit of uh, interest when we're watching the team moving forward. And especially since you're getting a new quarterback in Deshaun Watson, who you think is an elevated team, you're going to want to stay abreast on all things happening with the Cleveland Browns. And the best way to do that is to check out the Locked On Browns podcast. You can subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Uh, which you're watching that right now. Thank you for those 47 people watching on YouTube. Also, there are some individuals that you that watch strictly or listen strictly on podcasts. You can download the Locked On Browns podcast wherever you get your podcast. And we are on the new Roku app. If you have a Roku app, um, make sure you check this out. You can download that Roku app, and, and we'll be on there as well. Uh, Locked On Cleveland Sports, we're on that as well. And continue to support us. Uh, across all the platforms, we really do appreciate it. Um, we talked about uh, a little bit about the offense uh, first pa first uh, segment. Let's get into the defense a little bit. Um, we, uh, Joe Woods was much maligned over the, the course of of this. I, I think the first half of the season, a little stretch past that, he, he we did, we got on him about not really blitzing, not doing too much to affect quarterbacks. I actually thought the Browns' defense um, played pretty well. Uh, there was an op opportunity, I thought, after the first uh, quarter or so, I thought the Buccaneers were really moving the football on the ground a lot. And I was like, oh, goodness. Uh, they had the rookie guy, White moving the ball. They moved the ball well. And I thought this was going to be a, just another case of the Browns not being able to stop the run. However, um, Tom Brady came out after that first quarter and threw the ball a lot to Mike Evans, a lot of other pe places. I thought a couple people really showed up. MJ Emerson, to me, I've been saying, has played like the Browns' best corner. We'll see what John Costco thinks as far as his grade. I thought Miles Garrett um, pretty much playing with one arm 
um, did some really good things to get sacks in big opportune times uh, to take Tom Brady out of the, off the field. And I thought for the most part, the Browns did a decent or a much better job than they have been doing and not allowing huge runs and run after catch. John, what are your thoughts on defense? Uh, who stepped up and, and, and what grades did you see on that defense at the end of the football? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good good performances out there. Even even Jeremiah Wusukormo, who is the highest graded uh, defender for us um, in that game, he had, had 83.6 in the game. Um, coverage wise, he was an 83.1. Um, was was really good all over the field. Had a pass breakup. Um, yeah, he gave up a couple of catches and all, but I think uh, he had a lot of tackles and, and coverage that would make him stops. And uh, he did a good job out there. Miles Garrett. You know, you talked about it in, in the opening segment how uh, he finally showed up when it mattered, when, which is you know kind of a uh, you know a, a nod to all the the fans that don't think he steps up in the biggest moments. Well, he clearly did in this game with two sacks. His grade in the uh, the fourth quarter was was an 80, 88, um, and you know put to two sacks, had four four wins on, on top of that, a hit and a hurry. So he was he was all over the place in in the fourth quarter. And you talk about um, you know, Martin Emerson, or I guess he's now called MJ Emerson. Um, he was, he was really good. Uh, obviously against Mike Evans, he, he, you know, targeted seven times, gave up zero catches, uh, which is, I mean, you can't really ask much more for a guy to, to shut down the, you know, the opposing team's best receiver. So, um, he was, he was excellent out there. He had, you know, he had the, um, not every, not every play was a forcing completion. So a part of it is, like yeah, he he was maybe in position to make a play on it. You know that's getting a, a good a good grade there. If you're not making a play on the ball, you know obviously, it's, you know you, you can't get a, a high grade when you're not making a play on the ball. But if like Tom Brady overthrows an open receiver, I think that you know that did happen. Uh, you know one time there, and he was called for a pass interference. It does knock down your grade a bit. So grade wise, it doesn't look great at a at like a sixty six point three. But I think um, you know you'll take what he did in that game all day every day. Special, special talent, and I think he's, there's no question he's been the most consistent cornerback for this team this season. This is one, John, I do want to get to here. Um, you know, with Greg Newsom being out, and the Browns are in this difficult spot where they're basically trying to make a nickel, trying to find somebody to be the nickel. And you ask anybody who's ever played it, it's really difficult to go in inside where there is so much congestion when you're accustomed to being on the outside, plus you got that you know lovely little uh, lovely little sideline there, which you can kind of use to your advantage. Don't really work that way in the slot. Thomas Graham, this is a player I loved a couple of years ago coming out of Oregon. He was a guy that missed 2020, didn't play his last college season in Oregon due to COVID. Um, but one thing Thomas Graham does is Thomas Graham's a nickel. He is a natural nickel by trait. He's, you know, did it at Oregon. He's by far the smallest corner uh, of the Browns guys who plays. He's smaller than AJ Green. He's smaller, you know, probably about Denzel's side. I would say we all know Denzel's not going anywhere. But he got some reps yesterday, John. And and the key to defensive back play is, look, you understand completions are going to be had. Completions are going to be gotten. But the key is that's it. No more. It's okay that you get it, and a player like Chris Godwin who makes his living on a high amount of receptions, you know, whatever production he turns him into, he turns him into. But I really thought Thomas Graham yesterday, uh, kind of just getting thrown out there because you know we knew Newsom was out. AJ Green ended up in the concussion protocol, uh, but a guy who got an opportunity here, and you know, I, I don't know how it's going to work out going further, but this is a guy that certainly can help in that spot. Yeah, you know, think about it too. So last year he played for Chicago. Um, only had 112 snaps, but he was he was a very very good defender on those 112 snaps. He was an 84.5 grade, had 90.6 in coverage, um, had it, had a, a couple four pass breakups, um, and only, you know allowed five catches on 10 targets, which which is a fun, you know good solid numbers on a short small sample size. This game he gave up six of six for six, which is obviously like from a, a stat perspective is not great, but only 34 yards had two stops so two of the you know the, the catches he allowed he made the stop for uh you know for a short game which are you know essentially positive plays for the defense and his overall grade came out to a 70.7 so he was he was active um uh, and always around the ball it's not like he was getting beat like crazy or anything like that it, when he did give up the catch he was right there in position so um had a solid game and uh, i think if the browns would be wise that the to keep him there and see what they've got moving forward because 
you're right. Mo- playing in that that nickel role is is much more difficult than than you know if you if you've never played it than it is to play outside. Like De- you know Denzel Ward and and Greg Newsom, they've always been on the outside and they've been really good players on the outside. So trying to put them to the to into the slot against quicker, shiftier type guys potentially is, is, a, is a difficult task. So uh, I, I liked what I saw from Thomas Grant. And, and I know that like you and Pete loved him coming out a, a few years ago. So I think, um, I think, you know, we'll see what, what he can, can become. Cause I think he can be a good player for the, for the Browns. If he shows what he did like yesterday. Really, really guys quick, got some... Costco, let, Go ahead. let me, let me ask you this question uh, because people have been asking me left and right about this with, with Greg Newsom. Is it just the fact that, is Greg Newsom not as good as MJ Emerson on the outside? So by default, he's playing inside, or do you think the Browns naturally saw him as an inside type guy, and that's just where he needs to get adjusted to? No, oh, I, th- I think they when they 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 kind of say, hey, of our guys, our top three guys here, who's best suited to play inside, right? And it's 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 Newsom. I think that's what they do, and I think you. You think about it too. So, like Newsom is the like pr- pretty young in terms of like if, if you're going to put Ward or Newsom there, Newsom doesn't have as many reps on the outside saying, "Hey, it's ingrained into this guy's system that he's going to be an outside corner and only an outside corner." Like, I don't think you can put Denzel into the slot very often and expect him to be, uh, you know, the, the franchise corner cornerback you'd expect him to be. You'd love him to be able to do that, but I think he, I don't think he's developed those skills. Newsom's still raw and young in terms of his experience that you can do that with him um i think like martin emerson did play in the slot in college last year but that's not he's not suited to play in the slot that's just not what his body style is at all um he's he'd be a great great outside cornerback like you're talking about a guy that's six three what is he 210 or something like that like this super long and lanky but he's big along with that he's not really lanky he's just like long and big but he's got the moves of like a a shorter smaller guy that can play on the outside. So I think you got to, um, you know, develop those skills because I, they're not suited to play into the slot unless you were to say, Hey, we want you to be a big safety, like a cam chancellor type or something like that. But that's, that's not as valuable as what he can do on the outside. If he's shutting down like a Mike Evans or whatever. So that's, that's why I think they put Newsom out the inside. He's not the, he's not the lesser of the three or anything like that. It's just, he's most suited to, to be that. I also think where John's going with this, this wasn't ever going to be a spot for Denzel Ward. It wasn't. Once once Denzel Ward signed that contract extension and Denzel's injury history, so the last thing you want to do is have him, you know, near more fire. You look at Emerson, long, lanky. You look at Emerson. Hey, you look at Newsom, a little bit more short, compact. It's kind of an easy decision, and the fact that Martin Emerson is balling out like he is on the outside probably makes it, you know, even easier for the Browns to at least try this. Look and, and keep in mind, this is for the next six weeks. I mean, we still, you know, have no certainty of Joe Woods, and if you're here. So this could be the way they're going to play it for now, but we can't guarantee, you know, when, you know, new sheriff comes to town and what exactly his thought process is going to be. Uh, Brian, uh, Deion Jones, Chase Winovich, I've seen enough to know I've seen too much. So that's, that's the conversation we got going on over there. Uh, we're going to flip it up here. Look, he's here. It's official. He's on the roster. Josh Dobbs has been released. The Deshaun Watson era starts. It starts as soon as Wednesday when this team walks out to the practice field. The Browns think they have their guy, the guy that can be mentioned with the Patrick Mahomeses of the world, the Josh Allens of the world. The Browns think they have that. So six games to go here. We don't know what the future holds. You know, I'm not necessarily looking for a playoff run here. What I'm looking to make sure is that, that the Browns got the guy they think they got. And you know what? Yeah, there's going to be some rust here in a second. But, I mean, you want to shake off some rust. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me to Houston Texans every day, all day yeah. and every day, so to speak. Here, Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush, your latest lockdown Browns, our guy John Costco in for the ride. This pod is brought to you by the good folks over at Prize Picks it's Daily Fantasy Made Easy. You got a Monday nighter tonight. I know Colts, Steelers, who really cares? Well, I don't know what then. That's the best one where you go together, you go out, you put together a lineup. Full of players. What, Jonathan Taylor? Who do you like for the Pittsburgh wide receiver room? You pick two to five players. And if they go score more or less than the prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It is literally you versus the projections available. Uh, Prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch. All of the major pro, NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL. Of course, men's, women, collegiate sports. You can go 
mail. You can make an entry in six months or less. It's simple. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. With the promo code locked on, you deposit 100, they give you 100. You deposit 50, they give you 50. Enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Welcome back to the Locked On Browns podcast. G. Bush, John Costco, Jeff Lloyd. We've talked about the offense, talked about the defense. In this segment, we'll get to some of the questions that you guys have. And before, before we do that, we must say, one Deshaun Watson is coming back in. Before we get to you guys, we'll ask John, you know, what do you expect to see from uh, Deshaun Watson? Some people expect to see a little rust. Some people think he's going to come out and be relatively sharp. What do you expect to see from the offense, the differences between what you've seen with uh, Jacoby Brissett, who's played well by all intents and purposes, and, but what are some of the things that Deshaun Watson can bring to the table um, that would may look a little different from your perspective? Yeah, I think I think what we see is probably a, a player that's going to be a, maybe a bit rusty in his first game back. Um, he did get some preseason action, which does help. I think the very first play of the preseason, he looked like he was nervous, but then it kind of settled down even with, um, you know, you're talking about two drop passes after the first miss. So, like, he was, he only went for two for five in those in those five passes. Uh, four of them, he should have been able to complete four of them. So, um, I think uh, what we'll see from him and, and from this offense is kind of much of the same that we've been seeing throughout the whole year. I don't think they're going to try to change anything too drastically. I think they're going to – Stefanski is going to, like, say, hey, let's ease you into this rather than saying, hey, let's just throw everything that you we've got on the table for you because, A – you're playing against the Houston Texans. It's not like it's a uh, a kitchen sink type game. It's a game that you can get right and make sure that you're on the same page and 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 stuff like that. You still obviously want to go out there and win that win the game um, and have a game plan to win it. But I think you're not going to do anything that's going to be detrimental or think that you can't he can't do right off the bat. You know he hasn't played football in almost whatever is it 700 days or something like that. Um, 28 games. 28 games. It's a long time, but I think what will what we can see from him moving forward is like he I'd expect him to be able to pick up where he where he's been able to le- left off, you know, as a good player. Like he's he's an excellent player in this NFL. You know, talk about in 2020, he was he had uh we had we have a, our metric of wins above replacement. He was 4.24 wins above replacement in uh Houston. And if you remember, Houston won four games. And that's all because of what he was able to do uh, throwing the ball in that in that season. And I think I think te- uh, player you know people should need, need to understand like how good he really was for that team and how bad you can see that team now. Like without him, they went you know they were the number three overall pick last year. They're going to be the number one overall pick this year. They're not a good team without him because um, he he was you know, t- that type that was just basically picking everything up for them um, and. Now, now you know what what they have. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I would expect from Deshaun Watson. And uh, it, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead, okay. No, the go thing ahead. is, it will be difficult. It's it, it's twenty eight games. It is literally a season and three quarters, and then plus you factor in the fact that his last game was obviously January, you know, of the previous year. So that is a absolute long, long time. Um, I'm not so much concerned about getting back into the groove on the field. I think it's – and this is – no one's going to be able to answer this. No one's really going to be able to predict this. But this is more of, you know, what is my name now? What is my reputation? Because, you know, facts are facts. A lot of people think he's the scum of the earth, and he's going to make $238 million guaranteed. So, you know, for him – and it's going to be the part of extra pressure of basically not trying – understanding this is a six-game stretch to close out this year. You're not winning a Super Bowl this year. Go out, do what you got to do. Look the best you can. Let's find out about the receivers after Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones. Are these guys that are going to suit that? Are these guys that are going to fit the overall success we hope we can get out of a player like Deshaun Watson? Um, I think he'll play extremely well because I'm sure there's something, there's some vengeance inside him going back to Houston. Why? I have no idea because he essentially turned his back on them. Um, But there is the man. I'm getting to go back to work. And to not be able to play football, gee, how many times did you have to rehab from something where you were out for a long, long time? To finally get there, to finally get back, he's literally, literally got to be drooling at the opportunity. 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's one of the worst places to be where you where you can't play, can't get yourself involved in things. So, you know, I think he'll be uh, revved up and ready to go, especially uh, going into a hostile environment. We do have our question of the day, and it, and it comes from Pee, uh, Pee Wee's Dog Pound. He says, at Locked On Browns, what was the key for Miles Garrett to make an impact yesterday? Uh, was it the D-line finally getting a push up the middle? Your thoughts from this, uh, John? Uh, no, I they still didn't get much of a push up the middle. I, I would say it's just mostly Miles Garrett still doing what he does, which is he does get pressure on the quarterback. And the the fact is that like he finally just made made it home for a couple of sacks in the fourth quarter in overtime. And I think fans fans look at like probably don't look at at pressures. Like if the quarterback is able to get rid of the ball, even though he has pressure in his face and completes it, like they don't even think of it as a, as a positive play from that defender. And it's like, he did everything he possibly could up until that point, the quarterback threw the ball. There's only so much you can do. You can't get a sack in every single play. So I think uh, for him, for him, he just, he just made, made the plays when, when they mattered. And I think he's done that throughout his career. And then also this season, it just happens to be that fans only look at, uh, have a recency bias on that. 104 people in here as so far. I think we picked, we, we cracked 100. We'll continue to try to do this. I think we're going to ramp it up here a little bit because um, basically this is a brand new team, brand new quarterback. Uh, I think you'll see new plays. I think you're going to be having new invigor, like, you, you know, just they're going to be a new energy level around the Browns. Um, so we'll see that number. I think this number will creep up. Um, we'll, we'll continue to do it around two o'clock and try to get you uh, guys in here live. We appreciate you guys checking in. All those that hit that like button, we appreciate you and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Jeff, take us on out of here, man. Uh, look, uh, you know, whatever happens over the next six weeks, um, this team's going to, they're not going to play out the string. That's what's going to be exciting here. And, you know, hey, if the Browns end up having to play some spoiler, go ahead, play some spoiler. Let's see what we got here. Um, but I, for one, number four has got here to close out this season. He is Garrett Bush, Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, Monday through Friday, 11 to 1. Check it out. Uh, you know, obviously, Cavs, Browns, now Watson, a lot going on. Guardians, we'll see what they can do in the offseason. Make sure you're checking that out. The Barbershop, 92.3 The Fan, on Saturday mornings, 8 to noon. Make sure you're checking that out. Pre-game, post-game. Uh, I'm sorry, Buckeyes, Browns, of course, Cavaliers. Uh, at G Bush, myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd, at Locked On Browns. Make sure you follow that account as well. John Costco, at John Costco3, joins us weekly from PFF. You know, we get to talk, you know, about each individual game, break it down here, some thoughts about the team. And now, you know, where this team is headed, where they think they finally have their quarterback who is on the upper echelon of the other players in the NFL. We will be here all week. We are very, very excited, uh, you know, for what is to um, come here for the Cleveland Browns. All that coming around here. Make sure you're on Locked On Browns. We appreciate everybody makes it their first listen, whether it's audio, whether it's video, whether it's Roku. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, we appreciate you all so much. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LOB. Let's go, Browns. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.